I'm currently at the University of Maryland, College Park, United States of America. I am a postdoctoral research associate, so I essentially do research in seismology and geophysics. And um, essentially, the field is earth science. We try and understand the earth. And I apply seismology and geophysics to understand the earth in general. And in simple terms, the seismologist um, tries to understand earthquakes, how they occur. And also, can, we can also use earthquakes to see into the interior of the earth. And so you have sensors located all across the earth, in particular on continents, and they measure um, earthquakes. They also measure things, other sources of uh, ground vibration, like ocean wave, in general background vibration, cars, ETC. And using our understanding of physics and how waves propagate through the interior of the earth, we can back project and build images of the interior of the earth. And these images are important for understanding how the earth ha has come to be the way it is. Uh, it's important for us to understand the theory of plate tectonics, the theory that organizes our understanding of things like volcanoes, how earthquakes occur, um, uh, and, and stuff like that. In general, just understand the evolution of our earth and earth where we live in. So th that's important. Seismology is important for understanding the general earth science. Seismology in particular is not as important to the day-to-day -day understanding of how the climate has evolved, so in the span of, say, decades and centuries. But actually, uh, plate tectonics and our understanding of plate tectonics as um, useful as, as seismology applies to it is useful for understanding the long-term climate cycle. So things like thousands of years and millions of years. So, you know, in, in the broader scheme of things, our understanding of the Earth uh, is improved by understanding of how the Earth has evolved, and that is improved by understanding of plate tectonics, and that is improved by how seismology can inform our understanding of plate tectonics. So, um, specifically, what I am doing now. Um, at, the, um, at the University of Maryland, I'm using a big array of seismometers, about 400, that have essentially covered the whole U.S. I'm using that to build new images of the interior of the continental crust of the United States of America. Now, that research is possible because the United States of America has invested heavily in building that array. Essentially, Earthscope is Earth telescope, a telescope pointed into the Earth to see into the Earth. Now, so for the next three, four, five years, that's what I'll be doing. Essentially, I'll be moving next year to the uh, University of Rochester to take up a new faculty position. And some of the research I'm doing currently at the University of Maryland will continue um, there. Um, I also am very interested in essentially not just doing that in the United States of America, but doing that all over the whole world. Um, so doing that in the continent of America, doing that in the continent of Europe, doing that in the continent of China, trying to integrate all the data uh, to build new images of the continental cross of the whole globe. Now, I left Africa out specifically because Africa has its own challenges. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is um, infrastructure. So there are sensors, sure, but most of them are restricted to South Africa, East Africa. So South Africa, South Africa has also made huge investments in um, building geophysical infrastructure. East Africa was most of the world's interested in volcanoes, how the volcanoes occur, so the East African rift, uh, but not so much in West Africa, Northern Africa, and Central Africa. So my uh, broad, broad time goal in particular as it relates to Africa is to hopefully obtain uh, an infrastructure grant to actually build a truly continent-wide uh, seismic array infrastructure so that we can do in Africa what's been done in the world, understand the earth, understand how the um, Asian continental co cores of Africa was formed and how that helps us understand the general the, um, evolution of the earth um, uh, in general. Also, it, it turns out Africa <coughs> has one of the oldest uh, um, continental rocks. So you know, that can, without renewed understanding of the geophysics and the planetary uh, evolution of the Earth in Africa, we can better understand um, the Earth in general. A young scholar in an African university, but I I'd encourage them to solve hard problems, right? Because if you're solving hard problems, then though the solutions you gain from solving hard problems are easily transportable to other problems. But more importantly, the, the thing about this, the, this is what makes a scientist. A scientist really just doesn't want to repeat old solutions or reapply old solutions. He's, he's driven by a passion to know, a passion to, to understand, a passion to solve problems that have not been solved before. And I, I, I like to use, um, you know, 
a quote from one of the presidents of the United States, President John F. Kennedy, when people asked him, why, did they, why, why, is, why is America choosing to go to the moon? Because it's there. Nobody has gone to the moon before, how am I gonna do it? It's like climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, it's there. The first person to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, the first person to get to the moon, you will know. Now, the other thing people never know about that is, from going to the moon, the U.S. essentially led in aerospace technology and aerospace, and aerospace engineering. And there are tons and tons, millions of applications, engineering applications that came for trying to solve one single problem that was very hard, getting to the moon. So space technology, scientists wanted to get the moon. All the mathematics developed to try to you know, take a man to the moon. Computing, you know, the era of um, using computers to solve uh, the problem of getting people to the moon was a product of that. So to encourage um, a young, um, budding scholar in, in Africa, just, you know, solve hard problems, follow your, uh, curiosity, and you will develop skills that are not only useful for science, but are useful also in engineering and, and, and other applications.